Hi, I'm Chelsea, and today I'll be walking you through how Tony and I took these beauty fashion shots. I'll be going over the gear and the lighting that we used. I'll be covering some challenges that you might bump into with your camera settings. I'll even go over the posing and styling of the model. And lastly, I'll show you some of the post-processing that I did in Lightroom and Photoshop to really give the pictures the final touch. I'll start by going over the gear used. The lighting is very simple. We used, as a main light, we used a beauty dish with a grid attached to a strobe. And in the background, we used one to three strobes to give some nice rim lighting and to separate the model from the background. But the lights are also in the picture, so they're a part of the background. The strobes that we used are made by Speedotron and they're a part of their brown line, which is the least expensive line that they make. So one of our strobes was about 160 and our beauty dish was about $200. But I went online and I saw that you can get beauty dishes for 30 to about $200. If like many people, you're on a budget, you don't have to buy expensive strobe lights for the background. They're really mostly there for rim lighting and ambiance. So feel free to experiment and find other sources of lighting around your house. If you have other questions about gear and lighting, check out chapters three, the lighting section, and chapter six, the portrait section of our book, Stunning Digital Photography. If you don't already have the book that these videos are supplementing, check out the description down below. I provided a link to our book and check it out if you're interested in learning some more. Next, I'll cover how to set up your lighting. You want your main light, the beauty dish, on axis with the camera. That means it's going to be in the same line as the camera facing the model. The reason why you want this is because when the model turns to look at the camera, you want the light to be falling nicely on his or her face. The strobe light should be placed behind the model facing into the camera. Now the strobes are gonna make some nice rim lighting but also separate the model from the background. Since they're a part of the picture, you want to arrange them in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. So don't clump them all behind the model, but spread them out a little bit and make them look interesting in your shot like you can see here. Next, the lens that we used is the Canon 70 to 200 f2.8. I love using this lens for portraits because it makes me look better than I actually look. <laughs> The reason for that is that the telephoto lens tends to flatten features. So if you have any exaggerated features like a prominent forehead or nose or chin, this is gonna flatten them out a little bit and make you look really good. Also, the low aperture makes a really nice smooth background, also known as the bokeh. I understand not everybody has two grand to pop down on a camera lens, but don't sweat it. Any lens you use is gonna put your own touch on this photo shoot and make it your own. So if you don't have a telephoto lens, just work with what you have. We actually used a Lens Baby Spark, like you can see here, which was $80, and took some example pictures just so that you can see you don't need the most expensive gear to get an interesting photo. We made a video on this $80 Lens Baby Spark and it will be coming out soon. So if you'd like to see it, subscribe to this channel and you'll get an email as soon as it's out. Lastly, we use a plain black backdrop to make this a low key shoot. The trick to making your backdrop really dark is to make sure your lighting doesn't spill onto it. For that reason, I moved all of my lighting about 15 feet away from the backdrop and put a grid on my beauty dish to focus it on me and not let it spill all over the room. I also briefly experimented with a piece of pegboard that I found in my basement. If you like this look, you can go to your hardware store, pick up a piece of your own, and you can experiment with it. I've seen people paint it white, black, you could even paint it metallic or any other colors you like to get the look that you want. I'm going to recommend a low ISO, a moderate aperture, and a relatively fast shutter speed. What I used was uh, ISO 100, F16, and 1 to 50th of a second to capture the movement of me flipping my hair and such. If you are not firing strobes or a flash, um, it gets a little bit more tricky for you because you need more ambient lighting so that the picture is exposed. This means that your background isn't going to be as dark, but it's just a different mood and I think it comes out looking just as nice. You're going to want your shutter speed high, so you'll, you'll use probably 1 to 50th. It has to be higher than if you were using strobes because flashing light captures some movement, right? And freezes it. So another problem is that you'll need a high ISO. I used ISO 1600 to 2500, but a problem that I encountered is that the pictures came out a little bit noisy. I remedied that by just taking it into post-processing and running some noise reduction, which actually worked fine because it's a fairly simple composition, so it didn't really blur anything too important. 
the aperture. You want it wide open. I was lucky enough to have f2.8 on my lens, but yours might not go that low. So you'll just have to use the lowest aperture possible to let in as much light as you can. Next, let's go over the styling and how to pose your model. Unless you're extremely talented with makeup and fashion, I recommend that you just keep it simple so that it's not distracting. Um, for my clothing, I knew that the lighting would really be playing with whatever I was wearing. So I tried a black shirt with sparkly shoulders and the black just faded away into the background. So I realized I needed to use a color. Next, I tried a green kind of shiny silky shirt it was nice that it was reflective, but it felt a little bit like mom at a PTA meeting. So I knew I had to glam it up a little bit. So the next thing that I tried was a neutral sequin dress and the sequins played with the light really beautifully and uh, were nice and reflective. I'm not a professional makeup artist, but I've learned a few things from stepping out in front of the camera for Tony. First of all, the lighting really washes out your face, so you need more makeup than usual. So tell your makeup artist, or whoever's doing the makeup, to add more to the cheekbones, blush and, uh, or bronzer, and also your eyelashes and your eyebrows get washed out, and your eyelids lose some depth. So be sure to use eyeliner, mascara, eyeshadow, and to fill in your eyebrows a bit and um, that brings out all the right things on your face. And don't forget your lips. You don't want them too shiny because then every little imperfection, imperfection with your makeup artistry shows. So I usually just do a very simple um, like lip glossy look. Next, I'm going to give you some basic modeling and posing advice. So the model's pose is really important in the shot because she is definitely the subject of this picture. Um, if you're not using a professional model, don't push your model to be something that she's not. Modeling is really difficult. And when somebody's kind of pressuring you to be cheery, if you're not an especially smiley person or sexy, if you're more shy and introverted, then um, it might come out looking unnatural and kind of give away the fact that your model isn't very experienced. I'd recommend just letting your model go with it, being very encouraging. Um, stay away from saying things like, don't do that or that looks bad. Just say, all right, good, and move on. Let's go to the next thing, let's try this. So this particular shoe actually requires some more specific modeling advice too, because you'll be flipping your hair and um, there's some kind of tips in modeling that most people don't know. When I was doing this shoot with Tony, I was flipping my hair around a lot and I didn't just do it randomly. I kept a rhythm so that he could anticipate where I would be in my movement. So I'll show you an example of that. Um, I would count down for Tony and then flip my hair so he knew when to capture it. And so I'll show you. I go one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. And you keep a rhythm so that you can both predict the movements. Another thing that I did was I flipped my hair back like this. And that was the same thing. I would count and flip and count and flip all the while keeping a nice steady rhythm. I will say another difficult part is that you want to keep your face in the light as a model. So model, if you're watching this, you want to keep eye contact with the camera and you also want to make sure that the light from the beauty dish is hitting your face in a flattering way. Now that we're down in my office, I'll uh, show you what I did in Lightroom and Photoshop to get the finished look for our photo shoot. Now that your photo is open in Photoshop, I'm going to first start by selecting my lasso tool and selecting um, these unwanted little background features like this light stand. So you just select all around the light stand and then I press shift F5 and use the content aware fill. Now I press control D to deselect and see what it looks like. So you can see that there's this doesn't look so great and there's also a little dark splotch down here, so I'll circle this again and shift F5 again. And that's much better. I'm also going to select this part of the bulb in this light here, just because I think it's a bit of a distraction. So shift F5 again and use the content aware fill. Next, I'm going to smooth out my skin. Now, I do a lot of editing on people, so usually I use a plugin called Portraiture. But it's $200, so I'm going to show you a more affordable way. I'm going to take out the bigger imperfections in the skin using the lasso tool or this tool, the spot healing brush. Uh, 
And then we're going to, when we bring it back to Lightroom, we'll use some settings to smooth out the skin. So I'll show you that when we get to that step. But for now, let's zoom in a bit and find some imperfections in the skin and take them out. It's not perfectly smooth, but a lot of these will be taken care of with the luminance tool in Lightroom. So we'll just be looking for any big things like these birthmarks here. So I'll circle them. I press shift to circle more than one thing. And uh, let's see here what else. And then I'm going to do the content aware fill. For my face, for the fine lines and the little blemishes, I'm going to use this spot heal brush. So that looks pretty good. So next I'm going to go in and use the dodge tool to bring out my eyes a bit. So let me zoom in here. It's on mid-tones and my exposure is 50%. So make your brush a little bit smaller and I just kind of brighten them up a little bit so that they pop. Next go into the burn tool and I'm going to use the burn tool to kind of um, smooth out my makeup a little bit in my eyes. So it's still on mid-tones and 50%. And I'm going to go in here and just kind of smooth this out. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger and put the exposure down to about 20% and just fill in my brows here and put a little definition on my eyelids. I'm not a great makeup artist, but I can make up for that in Photoshop. That looks good to me. So now let's go to File and Save It, and it will automatically be exported back to Lightroom. Now that we're back in Lightroom, we're going to go to Develop. Initially, I used a preset called Cold Process 2, but I realized that not everyone has this preset, so I kind of figured out what they did to make it look like that, and I'll take you through that. But first, we want to smooth out that skin since you don't have portraiture, so I'll zoom in here on the skin, and let's go down to luminance and bump that up. Let's see, I think 30 will be good. So you want to smooth it out, but not so much that you lose too much details in the eyes or look doll-like and strange. I'll bump it up to 70 just to show you how strange it can look if you use too much luminance. You kind of get some smudging of the skin and the highlights look funny. They actually make the skin look worse and the eyes look too smooth and creamy. It looks unnatural. So let's bring that back down to 30. Now let's go to the shadows. Select this color box here and pick a blue shadow. So you don't want to go too deep because then it gets violet looking. So um, move down to the center here where it's less saturated and just pick a blue that fits your preference. I like it about here. So you can see now there are some nice blue shadows to the picture that make it look glamorous, but my skin still has skin tones to it. I don't look washed out. Next, let's scroll up to our contrast and we'll bump the contrast up a little bit to about 10 or 12. Um, I like to bump the shadows a bit I'll bump those up to about 20, and that brings out some definition in my hair. And um, let's also bring up the clarity. So I think about 17 is good. You don't want to do too much because then that brings back all of the, the roughness to the skin. So to me, that looks good. I like the cold tones in this photo. I like that my skin looks nice and warm and smoothed out. Um, but you're also welcome to play with the settings more until you get a look that you're satisfied with. I edited, the, I edited this picture a few times before I made this video, so let me show you a few of the other edits that I did. Let's take a look at this photo. I basically did the same thing as the last photo, but in this one I bumped up the temperature so that it was a bit warmer. It has a warmer glow to it and it's a bit dewier. I like this one too. Let's take a look at one more. So this photo, as you can see, is much more processed and less natural than the picture that I edited with you. Uh, I use portraiture in this one, so my skin is much smoother, unnaturally smooth, actually. I prefer the one that I went over with you. And I also added an artificial lens flare using a filter in Photoshop. Um, if you'd like to use that, you can go to Filters in Photoshop and then click on Render and then Render Lens Flare. And there you can play around with that setting.
So I realized that my screencast required some previous working knowledge of Lightroom and Photoshop, but if you have any questions, please ask below. Also, if you'd like to know anything more about our photo shoot that you saw, check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography. There's a link to our book in the description below. Thanks. Let's face it. That was the best photography video you ever saw. That was so good. If you tell people you're cool, then they know. That was really good, Chels. Did you like that video? You liked it. You liked it. Subscribe me, like me, never call me fat. All this stuff is free and you didn't buy our book yet? You cheapskate. <laughs> buy our book. It's super good. It's super good. Super good. Yeah, You'll it's love it. Good. It's great. Super, super good. This is super fun. Yay. This is so fun. Be beautiful, Chelsea. Pretend you're somebody else. <laughs> That's too much tuna. Hello. This is what Scott Kelby does, huh? I'm Scott. I'm professional. Read my book, I'm Scott. All the technical terms. Gobo, beauty dish, bleh, snoot, wig on a stick. Now on to camera setting. The photo. E-T-T-L. Say ESO, say ISO, say ISO. I'm so smart at photography. You know what's next? Styling. Style. It's a ruse. The whole thing's a ruse. Look at my slippers. I'm a mess. Nobody's gonna watch this except for Brendan Code. This is usually when the cast of a TV show walks out. No. Tell me nice things. Hey, IT, keep it together. Take two. I wiggle so much. Wiggle, 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 Take what your mama gave you. I cracked me up.